We don't need the Wii Guard because it's just going to make this harder to take out of the back of your head. <laughs> <laughs> You know those fishing motels you consider like a home away from home? This is mine, Smith's Colonial in Hancock, New York. Yes. In my opinion, you will not find better trout fishing east of the Mississippi than on the upper Delaware River. And in Hancock, New York, the east and west branch of the river come together to form the main stem. And the system is just loaded with big wild browns and rainbows. You know, everybody goes up there to dry fly fish. Few guys go up just to streamer fish and nobody goes to the upper Delaware just to mouse. Now, I'm a big believer in constantly trying new things even on waters you know well. So I said, I'm gonna go up to the upper D for a few days Days and just fish nothing but mice. I know how effective this is in the Rockies. I know how effective mousing is in Alaska. Now, if you're gonna do something like that, your partners in crime have to be on the same experimental wavelength. Hooray for Jim. Jim's here. So a couple months ago, Joe asked me if I wanna go fish the upper Delaware River after dark with mouse flies. And I said, that sounds really cool. I didn't know guys did that. And then Joe said, well, they don't. I knew my buddy Jimmy Fee from On The Water would be game. I do a lot of surf fishing for stripers after dark, but fishing on a river after dark is a totally different game. I don't really know how to tie flies. All right, considering we have five or six different mouse patterns, um, I think it would be prudent to test some out in daylight. This fly is called Mr. Hanky. Something a little more traditional. And when I called my good friend and veteran Upper Delaware guy, Joe D. Mulderis, and said, hey man, we wanna come up and just go mousing, he was on board instantly. Fished with Joe a lot, and uh, the bigger the fly, the meatier, and the juicier, the happier he is. And over the years, I have put up some big trout on meat flies with Joe D. You know, I've been guiding uh, 21 years up here. Uh, my biggest fish I ever caught out of the system was 27-inch brown, uh, and that was at night. I know it works. I, I don't know of anyone who does it regularly. So we had just a little bit of light left and we put in on the west branch of the Delaware. I don't think I made three casts and had a brown come up and hit this mouse. Ooh, fish <laughs> of course, I missed the fish. When that fish boils, you, you, your instinct is to immediately set. You really gotta wait till you feel that go tight. You gotta use the force, you know? Are we officially a ground? <laughs> now when the sun actually set, I mean it's dark, like dark dark. There's hardly any ambient light. You're trying to get a fly as close to the bank as possible. The thing is you can't see the bank, you're just gauging. The bank is right over there. I was ending up casting into the trees, I was getting horrific tangles. You know, you can't be a beginner caster to cast at night. In a rower seat, you don't know what's happening, especially the guy behind you, you know, and you just gotta be ready to duck quick. <laughs> we knew when we started we were never gonna get a strike on camera because you can't have any lights on. The temptation is to put a headlight on. First, you spook the fish. Second, you blind yourself and you blind your fishing partners. It was a nightmare situation for trying to get fish on film. Rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> I heard it, dude. <laughs> We missed about five or six fish before this one. We've definitely been getting action. Jimmy's first fish turned out to be a rainbow. Uh, decent, respectable Delaware River rainbow. Not a monster fish, but it just proved that, okay, this will work. Rolling, yep. Mr. Hanky just got Mr. Hanky. Slurped it very subtly. Now, after that rainbow, uh, Joe sticks his brown, nice brown. 10 of midnight. We're getting closer and closer to big trout victory here. That's a bow and a brown in the West Branch. Now the irony is that we're floating right behind one of the big lodges up here and all the dry fly fishermen are asleep in their beds and it's like we're in your home pool mousing it right now, bros. Hot damn, we're hooked up again. That time I was going real fast with short little hops. Hooking those two fish let us know we were at least doing something right. From my advice to your mouth. It's five after one in the morning we were just pulling off of the west branch. We had probably 12 swipes and smashes. That's that's what a man needs at this hour. It's two o'clock in the morning, we run the cars to a new spot, and we launch on the main stem of the Delaware. The activity kind of died off, so thought we'd get off that river, move down river into a little bit warmer water. You know, we had some action that kept us going. I just had the best hit I've had so far. Like a really 
deep gurgle and it happens so fast that the reaction time just has to be a little bit more spot on. We were just completely drained. I mean, there's only so much Mountain Dew you can drink, you know? You know, the hours are whittling away. Next thing you know, Joe D's showing us UFO videos he shot on his cell phone. Jimmy's getting scared. So Joe and Joe went to get the trailer and, uh, hello? What I need is that good, good love Good that we say good morning. It's been a really long time since I woke up at 1.30 in the afternoon and it just feels terrible. We learned a lot on the first night. So as we were getting ready for night two, we were a lot more confident. We're at the boat ramp and, and we're waiting for you know light to fade a little bit before we head out. And we're looking at this riffle right at the boat launch and like there's fish popping here and there. So it's like, what the hell? Let's swing a mouse through there. Oh, no way! We're just messing around waiting for it to get dark. And that mouse just got smoked. Pretty psyched at that moment, you know, figured, oh man, this is great. Tonight's gonna be the night, you know? We are at the boat ramp and that just happened. And we're just like, oh, it's gonna be on. 12 hours and two chub later. Fall fish. Wah, wah, wah. Time check, 5.15 a.m. You know, and before you know it, here comes the sun, and we are just completely zonked. Fishing all night long. Got a few fish to boil on a fly. Don't know what they were. Jimmy is still half-heartedly casting, and here comes this brown from 10 feet away. And <laughs> Jimmy gets smashed again. That fish just crushed me. came out of nowhere. In the evening, we get to fish, and now we get to fish at first light. Clutch moment. But then it kind of got the wheels turning. It's two nice browns on either side of darkness, dude. Why haven't we been doing this during daylight? Uh, we, we will. What's up, everybody? You know, mousing for trout is cool, but when I think mice, I think largemouth. Thing is, mouse lures aren't always the easiest thing to find in a tackle shop. But if you've got a popper, a marker, and about two minutes, you can make the best mouse lure you'll ever fish. Start by removing all the hooks from the lure. From here on out, your popper's gonna run backwards. So add a split ring to the mouth. Next, thread on a weedless worm hook. So you can use the marker to color the entire lure black, but I like to leave the belly white because mice have white bellies. And finally, create the tail by threading a piece of curly tail worm onto the hook. The profile is a dead ringer for a mouse. It's weedless and bass be hitting it like. So we've already hit the west branch, we've already fished the main stem, now we're gonna fish the upper east. It's much tighter river up there. A lot of brown trout, a lot of meat eaters, and I knew we could cover some kind of gnarly stuff in the daylight. There were bugs flying, there were fish rising. So but we're, we're pretty excited about this. You know, It seems like there's just more life, more activity going on. Every cast you're thinking is the one. This was gonna be the savior, daylight mousing. It's gonna be awesome. And I think it only took about two miles for me to go, hmm, not only haven't we caught anything, we haven't even had a single dink trout just come up underneath the mouse and look. It would have been very easy to tie on a streamer or tie on a dry fly. We stuck to our guns. The sun's going down and we're not that far from the ramp and we just kind of lost the light. Joe just goes tight, just bang. So we float during the day, do nothing, it just gets dark. We smack a nice little 19 and a half. That is a fitting end to just some of the most intense and tiring fishing I've ever done on the Upper Delaware. We were all like, what a finish, gents. Way to bust it out at the end. But you know, we still had about 300 yards to the ramp. Jim, we got another trout on. <laughs> Dude, look at the size of the fly he ate. He got that big lemming. Next thing you know, there's another 19 and a half, 20 in the net. We just can't believe this is happening. Jimmy's just like the brown trout machine. The kid can throw a lemming. You know, now we get to uh, like happy hour, you know, it just lit up. I get blown up on and miss, and it's starting to click in our heads that like, holy sh this is happening right now. This one even bigger? Feels bigger. Three nights of mouse in a row. I've, I've never done that three nights in a row. What it shows is that, you know, you might be out there waiting for a spinnerfall that doesn't happen. You know, if you have some mice with you, you know, you got a game changer right there. So you can make something happen. Almost 21, just shy of 21, a smidge. 300 yards from the takeout. We should have just put in there and rode up. <laughs> <laughs> this is about hour 40 of fishing, but we'll take it. It's well worth it. You know, I do it again anytime. You want to go again tonight? So, uh, yeah, give me about a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Holy hell, that's a chubby on a mouse. Here I come to save the day. Keep it squatchy, Jim. Cheese waffles, am I right? Cheese waffles. Yeah, right.